are the Makuna, hunters, fishermen and cultivators living in the Amazon forests along the banks of the Pira Paraná. Each morning the women work in their gardens where they grow manioc, the Indian's daily bread. It is in these gardens, under the sky, that the Makuna beget their children. Here too are the coca shrubs, which the men plant with ritual care. The headman, father of the household, comes daily with his two brothers to collect the leaves. They will take them back to their communal home, the maloca, where they will bake and pound them to produce the sustaining drug, cocaine. The forest provides trees for canoes. When seasoned, the trunk can be hollowed and shaped. This is only the beginning of a long and tedious process. Noon is the time when the women pass by on their way to wash the manioc in the stream below the maloca. This is an opportunity too for washing the newborn baby. Afterwards he will be covered in dye to protect him from the spirit of the wild jaguar. If at birth he is deformed or a twin, the Makuna consider this a sin and he must die. He will be quietly drowned in this same stream.
When the baby is one year old, he will be given the name of a butterfly, bird or insect, a name which an ancestor has borne before. This maloka was built by the headman and his brothers. Inside it is vast and like the nave of a church. One roof unites, say the makuna, and several related families live under this roof. Their dead are buried beneath the earth floor. The long process of preparing cocaine begins in the afternoon. The drug's importance to the men is indicated by the fact that they each carry a pouch of the powder whenever they venture away from the maloka. With it, they can manage without food. A man who cannot burn a canoe to the thickness of a finger is a lazy man and may never find a wife. The Indian fishes hunts and travels by canoe. The rivers are highways used more than forest paths. Burnt Yorumo leaves provide ash, which, when added to coca, releases the drug cocaine. The coca leaves are baked and stirred. It is a ritual. At some seasons there is abundance, at other times food is scarce and days will go by when, without his pouch of coca, a makuna will have little to sustain him from hunger. Thank <laughs> you. 
Once a year, when the river is low, the women travel by canoe to collect clay from the stream banks. With a pebble from the same stream, a new pot is smoothed and is then ready to fire. <laughs> Only the men make baskets, and string for hammocks and fishing lines is made from a fibrous palm leaf. Maku nomads sometimes stay for a few days with the Makuna. They are poison makers and sorcerers. They trade their Karari arrow poison for the Makuna's tobacco. Stripped from tree trunks, bark cloth will make coca pouches, children's cradles and ceremonial regalia. Each Makuna day remains essentially the same, and at night, in the light of beeswax flares, the elders talk while the young play music. before a festival mean more work for the women. Manioc is harmless and wild pig eat it. But once removed, prussic acid is released in the roots, so they are grated and the poison squeezed out. Manioc flour is their daily bread, and a good wife is one who makes good bread. The time of a festival is a time for decoration. Purple is for protection against animal spirits. Only the elder women are allowed to do the painting. The most treasured of Makuna possessions is the sacred box of plumages. Handed down for generations, the contents of this box represent the qualities of their ancestors and have mystic associations.
river rapids are where the first people came. The rocks are where the ancestors live. The port is where children play, where the young make love before dawn, and where visitors to the festival tie their canoes on their way to the Maloka. Makuna have many gatherings during the year. There are the puberty and mourning ceremonies and festivals to celebrate the completion of a maloka, an abundance of fish in the rivers or the collection of forest fruits. And this one, Nahubasa, the manioc festival. This is a kind of get-together to drink the ceremonial chicha and to mend quarrels and jealousies between the forest malokas. The shaman sits with the elders and together they recite the tribal myths a remembrance to the ancestors who lived by the river. He waves away the spirits of evil animals. His own spirit can change into a jaguar and wander at will in the forest. He controls the weather and by beating his pebble stave can bring rain. In the afterlife, the stave is a walking stick for the dead. Dancing goes on for hours. The women are never allowed to touch the coronets, which are sacred. They are made from feathers of macaw, toucan, egrette, and royal crane. The ankle rattles are cut from wild nutshells. The headman's wife stands in an honored position in the center of the circle. The maracas are engraved and, like all Makuna instruments, invoke the spirits of the forest birds and insects. Amongst the Incas of Peru, only priests and nobles were allowed to take the drug cocaine. After the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors and the breakup of the Inca Empire, the drug was commonly used by Indians in the Andes and the Northwest Amazon. It is said to intensify the feelings and can give hallucinations. With the Makuna, it is an essential part of their daily life, and passing the gourd from hand to hand is a sign of friendship and trust. Mm -hmm. 
The cigarettes rolled in palm leaves are also shared and exchanged like the pipe of peace. Whilst the elder smoke and talk, the young dance Chiruru, a courtship dance. takes snuff from a snail shell, blowing it into his nose through a deer bone. Around his neck hang a quartz pendant and jaguar teeth, signs of nobility and bravery. Some of the men take a rest from dancing and pour liquid pepper juice down their nostrils to clear their heads after hours of taking chicha, cocaine and snuff. We drink till we vomit, they say, and the rule is the chicha must be drunk to the very last drop. They dance all day until the dawn of the next, until fatigue and sleep overcome them. souls of good people go to the Pira Parana, the dwelling place of the water spirit Ni and the ancestors. If you pause and listen, they say, you can hear them sing. We were the first people, say the Makuna. Once we were so many, we were like the sands of the river. Now, we are few. 